Even before North Carolina seceded, Governor John W. Ellis ordered the takeover of the arsenal at Fayetteville, the mint at Charlotte, and federal fortifications. The coastal forts of Caswell, Johnston, and Macon were seized by citizens and state militia. Prior to the state officially leaving the Union, the legislature also authorized the raising of 10,000 troops and cleared the governor to call for additional volunteers. Training camps were established throughout North Carolina, and the production from the Fayetteville Arsenal was supplemented with a facility in Salisbury and a number of private companies around the state. A powder mill and clothing factory to make uniforms were set up in Raleigh. The responsibility for readying the structural defenses of North Carolina initially fell on William H. C. Whiting, a former officer in the U.S. Army. But Whiting soon resigned, and shortly after the state seceded in May, defense of the coast was split into two administrative departments. Walter Gwynn, a civil engineer and militia general, was placed in charge of the Northern Coastal Defense Department, which ran from north of Wilmington to the Virginia border. Gwynn found Fort Macon too vulnerable and ordered the construction of fortifications at Hatteras, Oregon Inlet, and Ocracoke Inlet. Brigadier General Theophilus Holmes briefly led the Southern Coastal Department, headquartered at Wilmington, before resigning to lead a Confederate Army Brigade. After Kinston native Richard Gatlin took charge, he continued the construction of batteries and forts around Wilmington. In August, responsibility for the state's coastal defenses fell on the newly created Confederate Department of North Carolina, which Gatlin was appointed to lead. Gwynn was left without a command, and Gatlin hadn't even established his headquarters before a Union assault force left for the North Carolina coast. <laughs> 